What does a positive Dixall Pike look like? Peter Johns here, an emergency physician practicing in Ottawa, Canada. The most common cause of vertigo is BPBV, and the Dixall Pike test is the gold standard for diagnosing posterior canal BPBV, which can be easily cured with the Epley maneuver. If you want to see a dozen or more positive Dixall Pike tests, you've come to the right place. You'll see the common features of all positive Dixall Pike tests, as well as the normal variations between patients' presentations. You'll also see something that might seem like a positive Dixall Pike test, but in reality is a variant of BPVV, which you should not treat with the Epley maneuver. Let's get started. Now you're going to hear some exclamations by the patients as they start to get dizzy. You also might notice some minor variations in the technique of the Dixall Pike test. That's because a lot of these were done by junior learners while I was taking the video. So here's my preferred technique for the Dixall Pike test. First, I turn the patient around in the bed so that their head is going to be hanging over the foot of the bed and I place a stool there. Then I say to the patient, I'm going to have them lie down quickly at, at the count of three and I simply place my hand on their shoulder. I don't cradle their head as they go down. Once they're down, I position their head where I want it to, to be and I'm sitting on the stool, fully supporting their head with my uh, forearm on my knee or my thigh so that I'm comfortable and the patient is comfortable. Since many patients clench their eyes when they start to get dizzy, I gently lift the eyelid up so that I can see any nystagmus which might develop. I'm going to turn head this way, and on three we're going to go back, okay? One, two, three, back you go. Pass the camera. Okay, keep your eyes open. Here it is again. Notice that when I'm sitting down, I have my forearm resting on my thigh, so I'm comfortable and I'm fully supporting the patient's head, so they're comfortable as well. So a classic positive Dixall Pike test. What does that look like? First of all, one side will be negative with no vertigo or nystagmus. The ear you're testing is a downward ear. Now when you test the positive side, you'll see some latency where nothing happens for two, three, or sometimes 15 or 30 seconds. And then they get dizzy and you start to see a crescendo, decrescendo nystagmus. And that nystagmus has a vertical upward component as well as rotational towards the downward ear, which again is the affected ear. Now, it lasts anywhere from 5 to sometimes over 60 seconds, but typically around 10 or 20 seconds. Don't test for fatigability. That's where people used to repeat the Dixall Pike test over and over again to see if the patient's vertigo and nystagmus lessened, but this is no longer recommended. With a classic positive Dixall Pike test, instead of torturing them with repeated Dixall Pike tests, test for curability by doing the Epley maneuver on the patient and then retesting with the Dixall Pike test 15 minutes later. If you do the Epley maneuver on the right patient the right way, 80% will be cured in just a few minutes. Here, testing the left ear after a couple of seconds of latency, she starts to get a crescendo decrescendo pattern of nystagmus and vertigo. By watching her pupil, you can see that her eye is moving vertically upward, and by looking at her iris, you can see that it's rotational towards the downward ear, the left ear. If the iris is quite dark, you can watch the vessels in order to see if it's rotational. Here again, you can see initially some rotation of the iris, and then you watch the pupil as it starts to beat vertically upwards as well. Now the ideal patient course would be that if one side was negative and then you tested the other side and saw a vertical upward and rotational nystagmus, you did the Epley maneuver and then waited 15 minutes and you repeated the Dixall Pike test and it was negative. Let's see what that looks like. In this woman, we first test her left ear and it's negative. Tell me if you're getting dizzy. No. But when we test the right ear, we see a positive Dixall Pike with a little oh, latency. Oh, no, it's spinning. And then vertical upward nystagmus with a rotational component towards her right ear, the downward ear. So we went on to do the Epley maneuver. And after waiting 15 minutes, we repeated the Dixall Pike test on the right side.
Nothing's turning. Now, as with any disease, there can be a fair bit of variation in how a Dixhall Pike test looks. Uh, you can have a short or a longer latency. Some people aren't bothered very much. Others are quite distressed. The duration can be sometimes just a few seconds to over a minute. And of course, the frequency and amplitude of the nystagmus can vary quite a bit. In other words, how strong and how quickly the nystagmus beats. Here, testing the right ear. Oh yeah, I feel yeah. really yeah. dizzy. Oh. A short latency, fairly short duration, and minimal amplitude nystagmus, mainly rotatory towards her right ear. Here again, testing the right ear, a fairly long latency. Ah, uh, I'm dizzy now. I hope you're appreciating the vertical upward nystagmus with a rotary component towards her right ear. Has it gone away yet? Yeah, it's gone away now. It's gone away? Stay right there. In this gentleman, we're testing his left ear, and after a reasonably short latency, Oh, yeah. Now, I hope that you're saying to yourself, wait a minute, that's not vertical upward nystagmus. That's not rotational towards a downward ear. Yeah, that's because this is not a positive Dixall Pike test. This is horizontal nystagmus towards his downward ear and likely represents horizontal canal PPBB, which needs a different diagnostic test and a different therapeutic maneuver. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that the dix pike test is to diagnose posterior canal BPBV and that this patient likely has horizontal canal BPBV, which will not respond to the Epley maneuver. It needs a different diagnostic test and a different therapeutic maneuver. And that diagnostic test is a supine roll test and the therapeutic maneuver is a Gafani maneuver. If you want to find out more about horizontal canal BPBV, there's a link on your screen. Here, Dixall Pike testing the right ear. <laughs> she had a fairly short latency and classic positive Dixall Pike vertical upward, rotational towards the downward ear, Epley away. This one, short latency, again rotational and a bit of vertical upward, fairly short duration. This lady. Uh, right here again. I, oy, uh, I got dizzy. I yeah, can't. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's oy, good. No, 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 no. Fairly distressed with her Dix Hall Pike test, and thankfully we were able to cure her in just a few minutes. Now, interestingly, the nystagmus changes depending on which way the patient is looking. When they look towards their downward ear, it becomes more rotational, and they look towards their upward ear, it becomes more vertical. If you would like to see some more information on this, search for my Dixon Hallpike Revisited video, where I go into this topic in detail. In this gentleman testing his left ear, I demonstrate exactly that. Yeah, Whoa. Now it's more rotatory. Now look upwards to the right ear. Now it's more vertical. Yeah. And back again to the left. Now you don't have to do this as part of a Dixall Pike test, but I like to do it to bring out both the vertical and rotational nystagmus. Here testing the left ear, again a reasonably short latency, and then the rotational nystagmus when she's looking down and more vertical, especially the upward eye when she get, changes her gaze to the upward ear. Ear testing the right ear, a fairly long positive Dix Hall Pike test, again showing that when they, she looks towards her downward ear, it's more rotational, and when she changes her gaze to the upward ear, it becomes more vertical.
the gun away yet? Going. Hmm? Going. It's going, yeah. Again, testing the right ear. Oh, there you go. Oh, God okay, bless. Okay, okay. Predominantly vertical upward nystagmus, a fairly short duration. Testing the right ear. Short latency, rotational, direct him towards his upward ear, becomes more vertical. Positive Dixal Pike, cured with the Epi Maneuver. Seem to be on a run of right ear positive Dixal Pikes. Not the biggest amplitude nystagmus, but definitely positive. And now a left ear. You can, oh yeah, okay, now look towards your downward ear. Okay, then straight ahead. And now to upward ear. Gone away? Mm-hmm. And now a right ear. Not everybody's distressed by their Dick's Hall Pike test. Some find it kind of amusing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But some do get quite distressed, and for good reason. Have a look at this. A fairly long latency, and then... Again, I hope you realize this is not a positive Dixal Pike test. This is purely horizontal nystagmus. It is not vertical rotational towards the downward ear, and he likely has horizontal canal BPVV, and don't try and do the epi maneuver on this gentleman. How are you feeling now? It's settling. It's settled. So to bring it all home, there is some variation in what a positive Dixal Pike test looks like but they all should have rotatory nystagmus towards your downward ear and or vertical upward nystagmus, and if they do, you should do the Epley Maneuver. Should you see horizontal nystagmus, it means they probably have horizontal canal PPVV, and the Epley Maneuver will not work on these patients. I hope this information will help you assess and then treat your dizzy patients. Again, for more information about posterior canal BPVV as well as horizontal canal BPVV, click on the links on the screen. Thanks for watching.